Beat starts right now. Welcome, my friends. It is Easter weekend. Many of us are going to be celebrating outside between camping, egg hunts, and barbecues. You need to know how to prepare. Here's meteorologist Adam Kasky to help you through that. Yeah, and Stephanie, it's going to feel more spring-like as we get into the weekend. First thing tomorrow morning, you'll notice the humidity and temperatures back in the lower 60s around San Antonio, upper 50s in some outlying areas, including the Hill Country. Then by Saturday afternoon, we're in the lower 80s. We'll have a trend of high temperatures in the 80s just through Monday. So spring like this weekend and Monday, then a cold front arrives early next week. That resets everything and we actually see our temperatures dip back below average. Don't put the jackets away quite yet. We're going to talk about those changes, the humidity changes and our next chance of rain coming right up. Adam, thank you. In other news now, a town that was built for 100 people is expecting thousands during the eclipse weekend. You know, as we continue to count down to the total solar eclipse here in South Central Texas, rural communities say that they're running on overdrive in order to prepare. The night team's Avery Everett traveled to Bandera County, where leaders have spent the last three years preparing for the eclipse. This ambulance is loaded. Check pads. Even though it's fully stocked and staffed, it's still not enough. Overwhelming for rural EMS. With the total eclipse set to cross over South Central Texas next week, Bandera County leaders say they're worried. We just don't have anywhere near the staff to handle as many people as we're going to get, but we'll do it. In a rural community like Vanderpool, volunteer departments are on their own. So eight people three ambulances mm -hmm. and one helicopter and one helicopter and 10,000 people plus county leaders say only about 100 people actually live in the town of Vanderpool. But during the eclipse weekend, they're expecting thousands of people to pack this place. I mean, just take a look at this RV park. It's obviously empty now, but owners here tell me that all of the reservations for these spots were booked months ago for the eclipse weekend. I'm preparing for not the worst, <laughs> but not the best, uh, just in between. There's only one gas station and one country store for miles in this part of Bandera County. And when we run out, we run out. They're buying extra supplies. Here and what's on the shelf, and then we've got another order coming in. As their strategy is to over prepare. We're a very small rural community with uh, limited resources. But uh, we pull together and I think uh, we'll survive this. And now with one week left, they're asking visitors to do the same. Have water, have food, have extra supplies, have fuel. This community is preparing for the unknown. It's going to get real. But their shelves are stocked and departments are now on standby. We're going to do what we have to do when it happens and we'll handle it. We'll handle the situation when it comes. So here's something while I'm watching that I'm thinking that a lot of us are preparing pre-eclipse, right? Right. Uh, getting our reservations done and making sure that we have enough supplies. But some of these towns are also getting ready for what's going to come after the eclipse. Right. I mean, people have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get into their destination for right. where they're going to stay for the eclipse. But people are really concerned, especially those county leaders, about what happens after it finishes. They're expecting a lot of traffic when people try to get home Monday night to be at work on Tuesday morning or even into Tuesday morning. And it definitely doesn't help that Highway 16 near Bandera is under construction. We took this video yesterday on our drive back from Vanderpool, and you can see traffic is down to one lane in each direction. So county leaders say this is just another reason to pack extra food, pack extra water, and pack extra patients because, I mean, anything could happen on that drive. Yeah, I'm also thinking about the people with electric vehicles. Right? Exactly. No charging station. For Not them, many. Or just one. Yeah. Not many. Thank, thank you for that, Avery. In other news tonight, a man has died after someone shot him in Converse. It's a story we, that we first brought to you on the news at 5 earlier today. Let's go back. It happened on Meadow Hill, not far from Tupperwine and Loop 1604. Converse police say the man in his 20s was working on a parked car in the street when someone who was wearing a mask shot him several times and then just ran away. The victim was rushed to the hospital where he later died. Tonight, Converse PD is still looking for the person who did this. Now to a night beat update. We first brought you this story last night. Neighbors say that a man who is believed to have shot his wife and killed himself 
openly shared that they were having marital problems. San Antonio police found 52 year old Miguel Sauceda dead and his 51 year old wife wounded inside their home on Champlain Drive near Nacogdoches last night. Officers tell us the couple's children escaped that home when this happened. They called for help. Neighbors say that the husband was a kind but recently troubled man. My boyfriend went over there and talked to him to see if everything was okay and he was talking to him about the divorce. Now, court records show that Miguel Sauceda filed for divorce in October. Police are calling the shooting an attempted murder suicide. Now we want to take a moment to remind you that if you or someone you know is dealing with domestic violence, there is help out there. You see that QR code on your screen? Scan it. Take a picture of it. It'll take you to a list of resources on our website and also throughout Bear County. The concrete truck driver in that deadly crash with a school bus in Bastrop County has been charged. According to Bastrop County court documents, Jerry Hernandez is charged with criminally negligent homicide. This is coming one day after police say that he admitted to using cocaine the morning of the crash and smoking marijuana the night before. Hernandez is accused of veering into the school bus lane that was carrying 44 pre-K students and 11 adults. They were returning from a field trip to the Bastrop Zoo. Two people died, including a five-year-old. The school district spokesperson said that the school bus did not have seat belts. Over the past few months, we have seen San Antonio's core school districts announce that some of their campuses are going to be closing. But a new demographic study shows a different story in other parts of the country. As the night teams county, excuse me, as the night teams, Patty Santos explains, it's happening in rural areas. You can visually see it if you just drive through um, and, and just see, wow, they're really building up in this area. East Central ISD welcomed more students than it thought it would this past fall. The influx is something the district says will likely continue over the next decade. Currently, we're at, like I said, 11,000 students. 10 years, 22,300 on the conservative end projection. So that's tremendous. The district, which covers Southeast Bear County, roughly south of I-10 to Elmendorf, is projected to see 44,300 plus new homes by 2033. So starting next year, you'll see some adjustments in the boundary zones. We've already notified our parents. Similar changes are happening at Southwest ISD, another rural area. I think people are realizing this is a part of San Antonio that was untapped and now they're realizing it's the place to be. The district boundaries are far reaching from around Loop 410 and I-35 to Lytle, Highway 1604 and 90 to the Toyota plant in the south side. Texas A&M San Antonio is adding a lot. I think they're building a hospital soon. Um, San Antonio is just growing and a lot of the areas are landlocked. Here, um, this is still some suburban area, country area. So it's new for a lot of people, a lot of young families, but I think a lot of it is affordable. The current student population of 14,400 is higher than was projected. Over the next seven years, student enrollment projected to grow to 3,500 as the area adds 6,600 new homes and 2,300 new apartment units. Both ISDs recently got bond approval to build new campuses. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Let's go over into Baltimore where cranes have already arrived and the grisly task of cleaning up that wreckage from the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse has begun. And tonight the search continues for four missing workers who are presumed dead. The debris from that bridge, however, is making that search a lot more difficult. The cranes are being used to clear that channel of concrete and twisted metal. Officials are saying that the section of the bridge resting on the cargo ships really weighs roughly 9 million pounds. It's a lot. So Maryland's governor says that getting that port up and running again is crucial for the state's economy. In other news, Oscar-winning actor Louis Gossett Jr. has died. His family made that announcement today. Gossett is the first black man to win a supporting actor Oscar. His family did not reveal his cause of death. Early in 2010, Gossett announced that he had prostate cancer he was 87 years old. We want you to stick around. This is really important. We're going to discuss saving money on your property taxes. Key stuff. If you're in Bear County, you're just weeks away from getting your bill, and we're going to tell you how you can cut it down. Also this, Easter weekend is here, and many in San Antonio are having fun camping out at the parks. 
we caught up with one man who's been enjoying that tradition for, listen to this, 40 years. It's next on the Night Beat. But before we head to break, we're going to take a moment to recognize Good Friday and also the meaning behind Easter. For Christians, it's an occasion to remember Jesus and his sacrifice for humanity. And here in San Antonio, the Passion of the Christ reenactment is a long-standing tradition. So here's some of the sights and the sounds that we took in downtown earlier today. I'm here today to express my love for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, my mom brought me when I was little to always remember what he did. Um, and I wanted to bring my kids so that they can remember too in this Easter season what, what he did for us and what the season is really for. The meaning to me is that that to see to see Jesus uh, like die for our sins for us to have eternal life and to go to heaven. It is the Lord who has given us this beautiful day. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Welcome back. Many of you enjoy going there, and now the Alamo Draft House could soon have new owners. According to a report from Deadline, the owners of the Austin based cinema chain are exploring a sale. It comes after the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy back in March of 2021. At that time, the goal was to keep the business going long term. By the way, there are two Alamo Draft House locations here in San Antonio, and you could read more about this report right now on KSAT.com. Having fun with family and remember, remembering the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what, really what Easter is all about. And for many, many years, people in San Antonio have been heading to the parks to stake out a spot and just enjoy the weekend. So this year's video that we took earlier today over at Brackenridge Park. And while we were there, we caught up with one man who's been keeping the tradition alive with his family for a long time. We've been doing this for about 40 years now, probably. Now we have our grandkids and everybody coming out, so they hopefully one day will keep on the family tradition, yeah. Keeping the family tradition alive, that is what it's all about. By the way, the curfew at our city parks are going to go back into place on Sunday at 11 p.m. All right, it's a good thing. It seems like we're going to have good uh, camping weather for this weekend. Yeah, I think the camping weather will be just fine. Not too warm, not too cool either. Personally, when camping, I like it a little on the cool side, so you just have to bundle up a little bit more. But this weekend is going to feel a little more spring like. But don't put the jackets away just yet. Take a look at our morning low temperature trend. So usually around 7 a.m. we hit this temperature as the lowest temperature of the day. We're going to be in the 60s this weekend and even on into Monday, then the bottom falls out again and we've got morning temperatures a good 10 degrees below average by the middle part of next week behind Monday night's cold front and Monday, Monday's cold front will have more impacts as well. We'll get to that in a moment. First of all, tomorrow 7 a.m. 61 degrees, a few areas of fog and low clouds and then Mainly gray up until we get into the afternoon. We'll have some sunshine, but more noticeable humidity back in the air. 81 degrees for the high temperature on your Easter Sunday. Fairly gray in the morning. A little bit of fog and mist, so slightly damp, but no real rain falling. 64 at 7 a.m. By 5 o'clock, we're up to 85 for the high temperature. Well into the 80s by Sunday and Monday, then that cold front drops those high temperatures back down into the low 70s by Wednesday and Thursday. And notice the average high this time of year 77. So dipping back to below average for the first week or part of the first week of April. All right, let's talk humidity. Dew points, Dewey's right now, upper 50s. So we don't really feel the stickiness in the air but that's only gonna last a few more hours. As the night goes on, the wind off the Gulf of Mexico out of the Southeast, it's gonna boost those dew points and they're gonna be in the 60s tomorrow. So you'll feel that humidity back in the air and it's only going to get even thicker and more noticeable as we get into Easter Sunday and then Monday. So actually Monday, I think dew points right up near 70, almost at that oppressive level. Some humidity, humidity levels we really haven't felt in quite some time. But then the cold front 
sweeps away that mugginess, drops the humidity, and you can open your windows again. Let some fresh pollen filled air into your house or vehicle if you want. Keep in mind, still oak season and oak was very high today. The count of over 8,000 and should be high again next week. All right, let's talk rainfall and rain chances. Newest drought monitor updated yesterday. Every Thursday it's updated. Still some of the worst drought in Texas is right here in our backyard, particularly just northwest of Barrett County from roughly Hondo to Lake Hills, Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, Sisterdale, Bernie. And you look at the rest of the state, North Texas, East Texas, Coastal Plain, the Valley, not even considered abnormally dry. We really need the rain more than anybody. And unfortunately, we have one little slight chance and that's just Monday night with the cold front. Here's the system that's going to help swing that front through. Classic, comma-shaped, beautiful looking upper level low here just off the coast of California moving in uh, actually drifting southward as it moves inland throwing some moisture into California. I just don't anticipate a lot of that moisture really helping us out as we get into Monday night. Some rain again in North Texas and the Panhandle. That's where they've been getting it. We'll be right on the end of the thin line of rain that develops late Monday night into the pre dawn hours on Tuesday. So I'm not expecting much uh, in terms of accumulations around here. And it's just that one 20% chance late on Monday. Notice the temperatures. We talked about it earlier back into the mid forties for morning lows by early next week. So feeling kind of fall like at that point. And I do want to point out April 8th, 10 days away. The total eclipse, especially in the type of weather pattern that we're in and our experience with this weather pattern, although the information is out there, it's still too early to determine just how much cloud cover we're going to have in the sky. Climatologically speaking, on April 8th at 1 p.m., we typically have 40% of the sky covered by clouds at 1 p.m. That's just the preliminary. We are on top of it. We will keep you updated and it is within range of the 10 day forecast on the KSAT Weather Authority app and our website and we are updating it frequently. So we'll keep you posted. Yeah, the point is don't go online and try to look it up and whatever you're going to see, it's not reliable. No, yet. and the technology is not there. Double check again into the mm -hmm. week. You okay. have to check back. All right, thank you. Now, a moment ago, we told you that we were going to tell you about a way that you can reduce your property taxes. We're going to have that story for you towards the end of the show. We want you to stick around for that because there's a cool event happening tomorrow to help you save money. Okay, <laughs> there's something else that people are happy about tonight, the Spurs. The Spurs with just an unbelievable performance. Victor Wembanyama, 40 points, 20 rebounds en route to victory over the New York Knicks. We'll show you how it all went down. Plus, a heated district matchup between Sotomayor and Stevens. That and more right after the break. Three straight wins on the table for the San Antonio Spurs with the New York Knicks in town. Unbelievable first half for the Spurs, firing on all cylinders. Off the transition, Victor Wembanyama has Devin Vassell open in the corner. Vassell makes it count. Spurs led 38. 27 after one second quarter. Isaiah Hartenstein is denied by Wembenyama. The French rookie then takes it all the way to the rack on the other end with a beautiful finish. It was all Spurs in the first half. Out of the half, Jalen Brunson single-handedly put New York back in the game. Spurs call a timeout after that nasty step back three. A back and forth fourth quarter sends us into overtime. And in OT, Wembenyama played hero securing the dub with that shot from downtown, loving the two-man game between Wemby and Vassell there. And the Spurs bring the house down with a 130 to 126 win in Overton. Brunson had a career night with 61 points, but it wasn't enough to overcome 40 points and 20 rebounds from Wemby. Three straight wins in the books for the silver and black. 
freshman Madison Booker and the one seed Texas women's basketball team in the Sweet 16 trying to stave off the Gonzaga Bulldogs and their fan base at Moda Center in Portland. This game tipped off at 9 o'clock and right now in the third quarter, the Longhorns are up 44 to 31. In the men's NCAA tournament, the one seed Houston Cougars taking on four seed Duke in the Sweet 16 and Houston and Duke are tied at 32 in the third quarter. At Northside Baseball Field number two today, Sotomayor is looking to stay on top of District 29-6A against Stevens. Top of the second inning, Angel Mendoza crushes one over the head of the third baseman for an RBI double. Sotomayor jumps ahead, two to zero. Mendoza fired up after that one, as he should be. The Falcons trying to make a comeback as Ivan Mata bloops one into an opening in right field. Tristan Eichenrott wheels home from second to cut into the deficit. But the Wildcats defense stood tall from there as Sotomayor wins it 5-3, a big-time district win. Today was huge. Uh, everybody's 5-3, and 6-2, and two, so that was a big win for us to just stay ahead and uh, keep looking for the next game. I've always been focused on the mound. I've always been able to do the job for my teammates. Coach came up to me talking about just keep doing you. You know, people beat people who aren't supposed to beat people, and it happens all the time. And so we've got to play our best at all times every single game, and that's really what we're locked into, and uh, that's, that's our main focus. All right, turning it over to college ball now. Now over at Trinity University baseball field, the Tigers took game one against St. Thomas last night, but tonight it's a pitcher's duel. Trahan Lee was dealing. He finished with four strikeouts and allowed just one hit through four innings of work. Then in the bottom of the fifth, Caleb Woodward bloops one into shallow left field. The Celts misjudge the hop and Jack Baker rounds third to break the stalemate. Trinity goes on to win it three to one, taking the weekend series. Como ISD made a big announcement today. Sean McAuliffe is the new head football coach of Class 6A's New Braunfels Canyon. McAuliffe is back in the Alamo City where he coached state Coach Judson before his recent stint at Cypress Ranch. He's replacing Nate Leonard, who will take over at McKinney High School. All right, coming up after the break, we take you to Minute Maid Park for the Astros' second game of the 2024 MLB season. The Houston Astros let the Yankees squander their 4-0 lead on opening day, losing 5-4. With vengeance on the mind, Houston hosts the Yankees in game two of a four-game set. Astros Trail 7-1 to one in the top of the ninth after giving up a bases loaded walk in the seventh inning. It's been trouble from there. So how was that for an opener? Yeah, it was incredible. Um, I mean, just the whole the whole process going out there on taking the field, uh, the fans, it was, in, I don't know, it, it's hard to describe how amazing it was. Um, you know, watching the replays of the whole World, World Series and then dropping the banner and, you know, I'm trying to go out there and get ready go about it normally and it's like I felt like it took me five or six pitches and I was ready to go. It was a magical opening day at Globe Life Field for the Texas Rangers yesterday. The club unveiled its championship banner before winning a drama filled thriller in extras five to four to the Cubs. They're back in action tomorrow. Stephanie. Okay, exciting stuff. Yes. I love it. The Spurs tonight and this. Love oh, it. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Here's what I promise you. In a few weeks, homeowners in Bear County are going to get property tax bills in the mail. I know you don't like that, but before you cut a check, the city is going to offer workshops where you can learn how to slash that bill. The next property tax help session, it's tomorrow. It's at Reagan High School at 10 in the morning. You can go there, get information on which exemptions you qualify for. People are also going to get one-on-one -on -one time with a the volunteer. They're going to be there to answer your questions about your bill. They're going to help you fill out your exemption forms if you qualify. There's also another session on Monday and several after that. You see that website, sanantonio.gov slash property tax help. Go there. You'll get more information on future sessions. Now, just a reminder, you have until May 15th of this year in Bear County to file your protest. Always protest. Yes. And take photos. 90% of the time you uh, do get a always. cut. Yeah. Well, and yeah, anyway, okay. I'm not going to get into that right now. Everybody have a happy Easter weekend. It's yeah. going to be spring like mornings in the 60s, afternoons, 80s. Then temperatures fall off below average again as we get into next week. By midweek, jacket weather in the morning. How about that? You know what? You've earned Easter weekend at this point. Have a fabulous weekend with your family. We'll see you on Monday.